Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mindspace Business Parks REIT's first quarter financial year 2022 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kedar Kulkarni. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to the first quarter financial year 2022 earnings call for Manchester Business Park C. At this point, we would like to highlight that the management may make certain statements on this call that may constitute forward-looking statements. Please be advised that our actual results may differ materially from these statements. Mindspace Reads does not guarantee these statements or results and is not obliged to update them at any time. We are pleased to announce that the trading lot for Mindspace Reads units has been reduced to one from 200 earlier, effective August 11, 2021. This much anticipated move by SEBI is expected to enhance depth and liquidity for the instrument and encourage a wider participation. I would like I would now like to welcome Vinod Rohira, CEO, and Preeti Sera, our CFO. Vinod will share the business update and his view on macro environment and commercial real estate. Preeti will further share an update on the financial performance. We will then open the call to QA. I now hand over the call to Vinod. Over to you, Vinod. Thank you, Kedar. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining my space Reads earnings call. When we conducted our last earnings call, the nation was grappling with a huge second wave, which delayed the return to normalcy. During most part of the first quarter, various movement-related restrictions were in place for those geography. However, our parks offered uninterrupted support to our tenants, ensuring their business continuity. Since then, the vaccination program has seen an uptake with over 500 million doses administered so far across the country and decline in overall active cases from peaks seen during the second wave. Various state governments have announced gradual relaxation of lockdowns and other restrictions as a step towards return to normalcy. We have seen a resurgence of economic activity, a continued rise in employment numbers, and robust financial performance within our client universe. A continued push towards vaccinations at a fast pace is key to tackling the possible third wave. Once we have seen the workforce vaccinated, we will begin to see momentum shift towards return to workplace. We continue to remain optimistic on the long-term business outlook of grade A office spaces. Global multinationals are increasingly looking at India as a center for innovation, knowledge, and technology. As per the NASCOM report, the revenue for IT and DPM services is anticipated to grow from USD 190 billion in 2020 to USD 300 to 350 billion by 2025. Top 10 IT firms have exponentially increased their headcount even during the pandemic, and the hiring trends are expected to remain strong in the coming year. The pandemic has also fueled the GCC growth trajectory in India, with direct employment expected to increase significantly from 1.3 million at present to 2.2 million to 3 million by 2025. We anticipate these strong underlying trends to translate into a demand upswing towards the best managed asset eco ecosystem. We are also confident to achieve significant mark-to-market opportunities for the vacant spaces at our parks. Globally, employers are seeking to bring their employees back to office as they are putting the return to work plans in motion. We anticipate Indian firms to follow suit as the situation on the ground continues to improve. This is well supported by rapid employee vaccination by India Inclay. Offices are re-emerging as the most preferred places to work, providing an inclusive environment for employees to ideate, collaborate, optimize, and grow. We have already facilitated circa 60,000 and more vaccinations across our parks in all geographies for our occupiers, employees, and their families. We achieved a gross leasing of 1.2 million square feet within the portfolio in this quarter. Additionally, we are pleased to announce that our under construction ROPO asset at Commerzone Madhapur at Hyderabad has seen a pre leasing of 1.8 million square feet. Our collections continue to remain strong at over 99% throughout the pandemic. Our net operating income for the quarter stood at INR 3596 million, marginally up on a sequential basis. Our distributions stood at INR 2728 million or INR 4.6 per unit. 
in our endeavor to maximize stakeholder value throughout the life cycle of assets. As announced during the previous call, we have firmed our plans to proceed with redevelopment for two wings at MindSpace Madhapur, subject to requisite approvals. This shall potentially increase the leasable area of the building under redevelopment from 0.36 million square feet to circa 1.3 million square feet, subject to final designs and approvals. On the other hand, we remain focused on re-energizing our parks and maintaining high standards of health and safety to keep them ready for our tenants as they return to office. On the demand side, we continue to see increased activity for evaluation and assessment of new consolidation needs of large technology occupiers. This is a welcome indicator towards pickup in demand activity once a substantial workforce returns to office. We continue to see sizable contraction in new grade A supply in most micro markets. With available ready to offer grade A spaces, we expect us to realize a healthy mark to market opportunity as we fill up our vacancies. Rentals in our micro markets continue to remain stable and we do, see, do not see any pressure on the same. We continue to witness strong pickup in demand from flexi office space providers as they move towards offering enterprise solutions. Tenants continue to consolidate their presence in most of the micro markets that we are present in. We are focused on ensuring higher renewals from existing footprints of occupancy, leasing out vacant spaces, and bringing back employees to the workspace as the situation improves. Reduced interest rates and low gearing of our portfolio provides us with room to pursue asset enhancements and other growth opportunities at our park, which are long-term value located to our unit holders. I would like to take you through the specific operational updates for the first quarter. We achieved a gross, gross leasing of 1.2 million square feet for the quarter ended June 30, 21. Of this, 1.1 million square feet was on account of releasing, and 0.1 million square feet was new area leasing. Average rent realized on this 1.2 million square feet of leasing was INR 60 per square foot per month and achieved releasing spreads of 56.3% on 1.1 million square feet area released. 91% of the leasing during the quarter was to existing tenants, while balance was to new tenants. We signed up three new tenants during the quarter. Our ROFO asset at Hyderabad is set to be completed in phases during financial year 22. We are pleased to announce that 1.8 million square feet area of the asset is pre-leased to a telecom giant. We received occupancy certificate for the hotel building at Madhapur. The building is already leased out completely with rent commencing in quarter three financial year 22. We have also received partial occupancy certificate for our building at Iroli West. These are area additions and proposed redevelopment Hydro Park. Park has resulted in our portfolio size increasing from 30.2 million square feet as of March 31, 21 to 31.2 million square feet as of June 30th, 2021. Of the total leasable area, our portfolio had 23.8 million square feet of completed area, which constituted 91.7% of our portfolio value. 1.8 million square feet is currently under construction, and we have another 5.6 million square feet available in the portfolio for future development. The portfolio is leased to more than 165 market clients with an average in-place rent of INR 57.1 per square foot and a weighted average leave expiry of 6.6 .6 years. Our collections continue to remain robust at more than 99% of the gross contractual rentals during the quarter. Our committed occupancy of the portfolio stands at 84.4%. On same store basis, our committed occupancy stood at 84.4% as compared to 86.8% at the end of March 21. Decrease in same store committed occupancy is primarily on account of addition of 0.8 million square feet area in Chennai for which we had received occupancy certificate during quarter one financial year 21. During our previous conference call, we had guided towards releasing visibility of 0.8 million square feet out of the scheduled expiries due in the first half. We remain on track to achieve the number as we have already released 0.44 million square feet during the quarter. We remain on track with the development of our two under construction projects, one building at Hira Zone Karadi Pune, <clears throat> and one building at Mindspace Ironi West, Mumbai region, to be completed in a phased manner. We continue to invest in further energizing our parks, providing our tenants with a renewed experience when they return to the workspace. Our building at Project Hira Zone Karadi received a platinum certification from IGTC 
while our building at MySpace Madhapur received LEED Gold certification on USGBC. At MySpace LEED, our endeavor to emerge as a responsible organization motivates us to implement sustainable business practices across our operation. In furtherance of our sustainability agenda, we became India's first real estate entity to join Climate Group's RE100 initiative. As a part of this initiative, we have committed to transform to 100% renewable energy usage across areas serviced and maintained by us by 2050. On a normalized basis, our parks have an annual electricity usage of over 100 gigawatts hours, which represents a sizable opportunity to transform to green energy. Previously, we have also pledged our commitment to the EV100 initiative of Climate Group to transition to 100% electric mobility within our parks by 2030. We extend, extended our support to construct a, an additional floor at a government hospital in Hyderabad. The project was completed within a short span of 45 days and is expected to enable capacity enhancement of 120 beds. In addition, we also continue to assist frontline warriors and marginalized COVID patients. We continue to work with various stakeholders in this hour of need. At this point, I will now hand over to Kriti <coughs> to walk you through our financial highlights of the quarter and full year. With this, I thank you all for the patient hearing, and I hand over this. Yeah. Thank you, Vinod. Good afternoon, everyone. We are happy to announce the financial results of MySpace Reed for the first quarter of the financial year 2022. Despite the challenging market conditions, we maintain our net operating income for Q1 FI 2022 at INR 3.6 billion. Our revenue from operations for Q1 FI 2022 stood at INR 4.2 billion. Cost optimization measures helped achieve NOI of INR 3.6 billion for Q1 FI 2022, which is marginally higher than Q4 FI 2021. We continue to maintain NOI margin at 80% plus. We announced a distribution of approximately INR 2.7 billion, that is INR 4.6 per unit for the quarter ended June 30th, 2021. The distribution comprises approximately 92%, which is 4.23 per unit of dividend, and approximately 8%, which is INR 0.37 per unit of interest. This translates to an annualized distribution yield of 6.7% on the issue price. On the debt side, our net debt as at 30th June 2021 stood at INR 37 billion. Leverage on the portfolio continued to remain low at 14.9%. Besides, we also have undrawn committed facilities of INR 4.5 billion. Over the last few quarters, we have achieved substantial reduction in our funding cost from an average cost of debt of 9.2% as of 31st March 2020 to 7% as of June 30th, 2021. Over the last one year, we have converted approximately 28% of our current outstanding debt to fixed cost debt. We continue to pursue opportunities to further convert part of our variable cost debt to fix cost debt to reduce our overall cost of debt. As stated previously, our strategy would be to deploy a combination of short to medium term and long term debt with different maturities as also a combination of fixed and variable debt. That's all on the financial performance. With this, I thank you all for your patient hearing and I now hand over to Vinod to conclude this briefing. Over to you, Vinod. Thank you, Preeti. Although major part of the last quarter witnessed COVID-related restrictions, we are encouraged to see the return to normalcy as various state governments have started relaxing the restrictions. The economic outlook continues to look strong. Our business has demonstrated high degree of resilience, and we are more confident to benefit from the upcoming demand revival. We shall also continue to partner with the government and other institutions to offer necessary support to augment health infrastructure while tackling the pandemic. With this, I request the operator to open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Adidev Chattopade from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening everyone. Uh, so the first question is on uh, slide 15 pertaining to the lease expiry profile. So just a few clarifications. Uh, so we have said we have leased uh, 0.4 million square feet uh, released in the current quarter in Q1. And it says that we have released area vacated in FI21 of 0.5 million square feet. So just want to clarify the area which has been released. Is that reflected in the asset wise occupancy tables which is shared later in the presentation? I mean, I'm seeing a difference between the same store occupancy and the completed occupancy. Yes, that, it is. Uh, so 80% is net of this. Uh, releasing of area vacated in FI21. That's number for the portfolio. Sorry, can you repeat that question clearly? I'm just uh, saying, you said we have re, uh, backfilled, right, out of the area vacated in FI-21, we have released 0.5, right? Yes, that's in the right. Water. So, in the, there is another slide behind which shows the portfolio level occupancy. So, there is a uh, current occupancy and a committed occupancy. There are two occupancy figures, right? One current occupancy 80% and committed occupancy 84%. Right. So, this uh, 0.5 which we have done, so that corresponds to this 80% or to 84%. 84.4. Okay, so that is yet to be reflected. So the leasing which we have done, right, is yet to be reflected in the coming quarters, right? That area has to go up, the area under. No, no, it is part of, it is already reflected here as committed occupancy. It just translates into a formal lease deed, then it moves into the occupancy bucket. Okay, so, so just uh, following up on that, so would that mean that we are almost now nearing the bottom of this uh, occupancy's, uh, we see the occupancy, sorry. Let me rephrase. Do we see the occupancy bottoming out now, and we should see it going upwards? So we are definitely seeing businesses doing very, very well, especially in the universe of our tenants because of the technology push that's needed, and we are seeing them push up the employment numbers. So we are feeling very confident that coming back to the workspace is going to be sooner than later. We just have to be cautious about uh, making sure that globally we are fine over the next few quarters from a third way perspective and we are good to go. Okay, Since one more question now, uh, the, our uh, Q1 distribution has been fairly resilient. Uh, so for, would you like to share some lower or upper end of uh, distribution guidance for the year or would you like to hold back? So, uh, well, if I may take this. Sure. Uh, Adidev, hi. Uh, so Adidev, as you have seen this time, um, you know, despite all the challenging conditions that we've gone through, uh, we have given a pretty attractive distribution. Uh, and our 6.5%, 90% of that is tax free. So on a post tax basis, it still stands a healthy distribution. Uh, but in terms of guidance, uh, we would like to, uh, you know, see how things unfold. But uh, having said that, uh, as I told in my last uh, conversation as well, uh, we have, uh, while we've had some of the leases which have taken longer to release and the rents have taken longer to start, but we've achieved a very significant reduction in our interest cost, which has helped us uh, offset a very large portion of our uh, rental which has not come in. So uh, I would uh, maintain at that, and uh, you know, uh, we will see as we uh, go along. But you know, having said that, for the quarter, I would say we've delivered a pretty attractive uh, distribution. Yeah, so just sorry to just continue. So uh, adjusting for all this working capital and capex adjustment, other adjustments, should we at least expect the current quarter's run rate to be maintained for the rest of the year, if not higher? So Adhadev, again, uh, I would not yeah. want to uh, comment on uh, any specific number, but uh, we would, I would say, continue to uh, work towards uh, delivering our performance, I would say. Okay, that okay. We've fine, fine. Okay, okay. Understand completely. Yeah, thank you all the best. I'll come back in the queue. I have more questions. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Murtaza Arziwala from Kotex Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Just wanted to uh, say so if you can speak closer to the answer, please. Uh, is that clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry, Murtaza, we are not able to hear you. Sorry. So uh, so if you yeah. can move to a better reception area, please. Your voice is breaking up a lot. Is this any better? 
Uh, no, sir? Breaking up. Okay. Just let me back in the question for this right me. Sure, sir. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agarwal from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the distribution and the distribution walkdown. Uh, could you help us understand, uh, you know, uh, not only this quarter, but last two, three quarters, we've seen that the debt drawdown number is uh, higher than that of the capex that you would have incurred. So my understanding was that probably this would be closer to uh, you know, the capex is funded by debt and remaining remaining distributions flow down to, uh, you know, flow down as is and then they are distributed. So could you explain why? Because on from last three quarters, I see the capex is about uh, 375 crores, but the debt drawdown is 640 crores. So could you he explain that better? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me take that. Uh, so uh, two things here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, one, as you rightly said, uh, CAPEX is fully funded out of debt. Uh, there have been working capital changes also. Uh, in working capital, of course, we have had some cut-out costs, which we consider as CAPEX. But from an accounting perspective, it gets classified as working capital. So to that extent, that is also funded by uh, debt. Also, what has happened is there have been certain uh, cash flows. Uh, now, of course, given the nature of these working capital uh, changes, there is always a timing issue. So just especially if I have to address this quarter, we've had about 35 crore of uh, tax refunds, which were actually expected in this quarter, which we received in the previous quarter itself. Similarly, this being the first quarter of the financial year, we've had several expenses which were prepaid for the entire year, and therefore you've seen the working capital being on a higher side uh, in this quarter. So there are these timing issues which will happen, and of course part of the debt, as we had guided in the IPO document also, uh, has been out of debt, but that's a part of it, which was as it is, uh, you know, part of our IPO disclosures as well. But otherwise, the other movements are broadly because of working capital uh, changes, as I alluded to. Okay. So over time, do you think these numbers would converge uh, over the next few quarters as the one-off? Yeah, some of these one-offs which have happened, like I told you, some prepaid expenses which have happened in this quarter, some of the timing issues in terms of the cash flow coming earlier or later, those all I would see uh, normalizing. Okay, sure. Uh, my second question is, uh, you know, you mentioned about a ROFO asset, uh, uh, you know, it has now been fully pre-leased 1.8 million square feet. So the building is now complete and it's pre-leased. So is it time, uh, you know, that will be inducted into the REIT? Hi, boy. Uh, so the asset yeah. is really still under construction. So we were ma yeah, managed to pre-lease while it is under construction. It gets ready by second quarter next year and the rent sign phases. So at the right opportune time where we can create an accretive acquisition and a yield accretive sequence, we will do that. Okay. So so just to understand this better, what would be a good time like typically when the O comes in and probably the rent-free period ends, is that the time that you would like to add the asset into the REIT? That's right. Okay. Okay. And and this last one, uh, you know, just one clarification, you've added this redevelopment, uh, you've uh, taken this asset for redevelopment. What would be the time uh, taken typically to bring this asset back into, uh, you know, and and any more plans to... Uh, redevelop assets uh, in Hyderabad. So uh, this is a first for us. We are quite excited. Subject to all the approvals coming through, uh, we would like to deliver. see this asset delivered really quickly. It will take between 27 and 30 months to bring it in. And we want to see more of these going forward in the future once we've demonstrated this successfully. Okay, sure. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shashank Salva from Somerset Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks uh, for the call. Um, my first question was uh, on the releasing spread of uh, 56%, which seems quite high. So I just wanted to clarify whether that's just on uh, the ones which had, you had leased earlier and doesn't include any vacant space, or does that calculation include the vacant space as well? No, it includes both. So it's a combination of assets, some that were lying vacant and some that got released to mark to market. 
that is what the opportunity we've been always talking about uh, because our average rents for those assets, for example, some of them were as low as 41 rupees, and we were able to get 65 rupees when we released in these markets. Okay. So that's where the mark-to-market opportunity really excites. So does that? Uh, so sorry for clarifying, but does that mean that it also includes assets where you are not receiving any rent? So the the yes. denominator in that case is zero. So no, no. So there were certain buildings which had expired and the tenant had just about vacated them. We were fortunate to get another tenant to fill up that building in the in this last quarter. And then those rents start. By default, we are getting this mark to market opportunity. Okay. Okay. So okay. So I just wanted to clarify that it doesn't include when you say vacant, it doesn't sort of take zero into the calculation in, in the denominator for rent achieved previously. That's right. No. Okay. And overall, uh, can you uh, also elaborate on in terms of the face rents and also incentives which you have to provide? Have there been any significant changes or are you still uh, seeing positive face rent increases? So the, there are no real uh, major tectonic shifts taking place. People have just asked for slightly longer periods for fitting out because of uncertainty. Otherwise, it's all normal diesel. Right, right. And the mark-to-market potential, which has been trending lower, uh, is there a reason why it, it's sort of trending lower now? No, because we, when we go on realizing mark-to-market, the residual mark-to-market opportunity looks that it's going lower. But cumulatively, from 54.9, we moved to 55 to 57. So we have gone on realizing our mark-to-market, which is why the residual mark-to-market starts looking lower. Right, okay. And um, there, there were a couple of things like for Mallard, um, your in-place rent, that's the only property where actually the in-place rents have fallen. Uh, is there any particular reason for that? So uh, those rents there haven't really fallen. Actually, it was there were some which were with the fitted out facilities, their tenures were over. Uh, the newer tenants which have come in are paying us ma- the market rents that we've got for, and that's the market rent we're getting. Right, right. And there are four properties where your committed occupancy is um, relatively low. So Ironly West, Square, BKC, Pocharam, and Porur. So what are the um, sort of plans to improve the occupancy over there? So Ironly West, the significant vacancy was SEZ, and we are actually quite uh, excited about the opportunity that now SEZs may open up to allow for the uh, non-SCV occupiers, that means generally the STPI, all technology companies, to be able to participate in occupying spaces which are reserved for SCVs. Once that comes through, we will see traction of leasing take place there as well. The Porur asset is a new asset that just got completed, which is why it's taking slightly longer to lease because we entered uh, that asset completed right in the middle of the pandemic. And we've seen numbers now start to begin to rise in terms of interest. So these will catch up and they will leave out. Right, right. And finally, um, you mentioned that as uh, vaccination improve and you'll see an improvement in demand, and but consequently, won't you also see an increase in supply because some of the construction which was impacted by COVID will also get completed. So how, how do you see the demand trend uh, situation at least for the next uh, 12 months? So as we demonstrated to you in Hyderabad, which would have been probably likely the market where everyone would feel has the highest overhang of vacancies and incomplete assets, etc. There is a big difference between a grade A asset operator and an asset manager than just a building in a vicinity. And that's how, that's what's getting demonstrated time and time again, that the client is preferring stability of asset management and quality of the owner, as well as the asset management and facility. So those grade A assets are getting picked up first for demand, and you will always see a disproportionate rush towards grade A. And you will always see the vacancy shrink in grade A really quickly while the overhang of supply continues to be there in the marketplace. Having said that, the restart of construction we are still not seeing in most micro markets of incomplete or half-completed projects. There is very, very limited action there. So we have a strong sense to believe that that supply is not coming in a hurry. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Satinder Singh Reddy from Eon Infotech Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon and uh, uh, congratulations on the steps you've taken to ensure that the uh, distribution uh, doesn't drop much despite the general time, especially on the cost of funding uh, that you've driven down. Uh, so my questions were, uh, uh, first, regarding I really West, uh, what we see is that there is a 10% fall Q on Q on the revenues. Uh, uh, while the committed occupancy has stayed stable at 68.6 between the last quarter and, and this one, okay. So, any reason to explain this 10% fall in the NOI? Sorry, we are not able to hear you clearly. Can okay. you help us repeat the question because the voice is... Uh, okay. Yeah, so so my question is regarding uh, Iroli West. Uh, Q on Q, Iroli West has seen a 10% fall in revenue from operation. Uh, while the committed occupancy has stayed constant at 68.6 uh, in these two quarter and periods. Okay. Any reason for this 10% fall in uh, uh, the revenue? Yeah. Uh, Ganod, if I can just yeah, yeah, go ahead, take please. that. Yeah. So th what happens is when we say committed occupancy, that also includes uh, the lease agreements which we have signed, but not the proper lease deeds. So the rent of those uh, leases will happen in the months to come. That's the reason you are seeing uh, betterment in terms of a committed uh, occupancy. But uh, the rent will start in the months to come. That's why you've not seen the increase in the revenue. Yeah, so, so what I've seen is that the occupancy has fallen from 66.4 to 63.8, but the committed stays same. So normally occupancy falling would show that some client has moved out. Okay, That's the only way occupancy can fall because the increase in space is relatively small. You've added 100K probably. Uh, uh, but the committed occupancy stays. So either a client has gone out and maybe another one has committed or something like that. Uh, but the revenue has fallen 10%, which is a significant fall over just a quarter yeah so uh, in terms of uh, the revenue fall because there would also be certain uh, exits which we would have announced in the previous uh, quarter itself uh, uh, the revenues have not come in uh, this quarter so therefore you would actually see that revenue uh, tapering for this quarter okay 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 fine Thank you. Uh, another question on the data center. So last quarter you mentioned about data center. This time these slides do not talk about. So we hope the progress is uh, is on track on the data center project. Okay. Yeah, we continue to see interest in, especially in the Navi Mumbai region for data centers. Uh, and we continue to be engaged with tenants. That's all that I can tell you right now. And, and the project that you announced last time, that is on track. Yes, that's right. Okay, okay, fine. One last question on the uh, uh, JP Morgan seems to have dropped out from the top 10. Okay, so they were about 3.8% and now they're out of the top 10, which means okay, below 2.5%. Okay, can you just share uh, what is this uh, moment okay, like? So JP Morgan, right before the pandemic, actually had taken two build to suit facilities for themselves to consolidate because they were fragmented in each of their markets. And that space that they actually were to vacate a year and a half ago, that project of theirs got delayed. They continued to occupy. They are now vacating, and we already have found a tenant to take that space, which we will talk about in the next quarter. Okay, okay thank you. This was Eroli West. This was Hyderabad. Okay, Hyderabad. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, th thank you very much. I'll come back in the q and Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Samir Baisiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much and good evening, everyone. Uh, the question is on the early exit. Um, so uh, is this 0.2 million square foot that you show on uh, slide number 15? Is this a new one? And I think that uh, in the previous quarter we had 0.5. So if you can talk about this RV at the end of it, and you know who are these uh, 
tenants who are moving out are distressed for COVID or some other reason? Hi, Samir, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks, Tanav. So this is an additional small tenant about 100,000 square feet in Hyderabad and another uh, miscellaneous 40, 50,000 square foot worth of tenants uh, across the portfolio, which we have visibility, they will leave in the next six months. Do you see more of these coming, you know? As of now, so let me tell you, about 1.6 odd million square feet of ours is due for terminations and expiry. We have already visibility of 1.2 out of that. So we are not seeing too much hiccups there going forward. When you say you got the visibility for 1.2 out of 1.6, you're yeah. saying of the of releasing renewals. That's right. Okay. I don't know, but, but I was just asking, at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, what I was asking uh, was about the uh, early exits. Uh, are we end of that cycle, or do you think there could be more uh, coming through? I would be reasonably confident we are at the end of that cycle, yeah. But we still have to be uh, careful going forward, but I don't see too many hiccups coming. Okay, excellent. Now, um, when, if I were to think through, you know, uh, the vacant area uh, in, in the sense or, or the task of, uh, of uh, leasing uh, through next nine months, so I take the current vacant areas, maybe 3.5 million square foot, uh, I think a shade below that. And then the uh, the exits and the expiries, which are not uh, committed for, maybe that's another what, million square foot. And the new completion that should be, uh, I think, early west one million. So roughly five and a half million square foot is what we need to do. Is that fair? And second is your gross leasing uh, for Q1 was 1.2 million square foot. Uh, you know, what is it that you can expect in Q2, Q3 just to arrive at there for the net, um, you know, number? So we continue to see similar traction for transactions of gross leasing going forward, at least for the next quarter and, and hopefully going forward for the other quarters as well. We are seeing grassroots of inquiry begin to happen in different micro markets. And we are seeing the necessity of clients who want to continue with their footprints and are already speaking about renewals on their scheduled expiries. So all of those things are happening. Large lions with large RFPs are still early days, but they've started to begin to talk. So you will see that traction happen in the next few quarters where they will then start talking of hard real estate decisions. Okay. So, you know, that means that until that uh, doesn't happen, which is large uh, RFPs by new uh, tenants, our vacancies are probably going to continue the way they are, if not uh, come off, uh, you know, uh, if not go up uh, even more. So, it's like this. The uh, obvious large vacancies will, will go with the large kind of clients, but we're seeing small demand between 50, 100,000, 200,000 square feet coming. So we are reasonably confident we'll be able to fill these up. Okay, and, and you agree with that uh, gross number of, of five and a half million square foot that you probably would want to lease up, uh, you know, by the end of this year? It's not five and a half, but I mean, the numbers are given to you broadly in that presentation. Happy to uh, get those addressed for you separately as well. But uh, having said that, uh, if you see our same store increase, when we added 300 odd thousand square feet, even that is pre-leased 84.4%. So we are getting traction even on the under construction building for pre-leasing, which is also a very good sign, including the ROFO asset you saw, which is under construction a year away to complete. We've already pre-leased 1.8 million. So it's a combination of demand that's coming for future and present. We don't want to lose any demand in any of the markets. Okay, well, fair enough, you know, I, I get your point. And uh, I think someone asked you uh, earlier also in the call, and I'm trying to get an answer to that, that at 84% occupancy, are we really at the bottom of it? Or do you think there could be another 100, 200 basis point? And how long can we, even if it's a stable number, how long this bottom can continue? That's what I was trying to say. We feel the market is quite stable now. Uh, we are not seeing too many uh, companies uncertain about their footprints for occupancy. Okay. 
Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Ashmore Investment. Please go ahead. Um, hi, I'm referring to slide 22, and uh, this also goes back to a question that one of the previous participants had asked. In Eroli West, uh, you've written that uh, you've received the SEZ uh, denotification. So is that what you were waiting for to bring in non-SEZ clients or is there something else? Because your response seemed to suggest that you're waiting for some more uh, permissions. So you're right. The one building that was independently getting constructed could be denotified. We got that building denotified successfully finally. And we already saw traction there where we've leased 250,000 square feet in that under construction building. And we're seeing more traction for demand as we go along forward. So we are, we are reasonably confident that the STPI demand is picking up for that micro market, which is why the residual SEZ, which is in a cluster together, if we get the opportunity to lease that in combination with the SEZ and non-SEZ occupiers, that may change the game for us. But you'll have to apply for more denotifications for those yes, buildings. That's right. So that's the process we are waiting for clarity from the government, and they are moving forward in that direction really quickly. And how long does it take to get this denotification? Denotification, if it's independent building, which you can isolate between six and nine months. Okay. But it's more tricky for clusters. Sorry? For clusters, it will be more tricky. For clusters, there's a new guideline that they're proposing, which will allow for coexistence. That will make it even more easier. Then you don't necessarily need to carve out buildings. Okay. All right. Because it's, there's a whole lot of visibility they want to create for long-term occupancy of the SEZ parks across of India. So they're cognizant of that fact, and in fact, and they want to come back with a policy which helps everyone. Okay, and how much of that uh, square, f uh, how, how much how much space is vacant in uh, in those clusters which would benefit from this new proposal, assuming it were to come through? Within our portfolio? Yes. 1.5 odd million square feet. Okay, and that's already part of the vacant area of 16%. That's or right. Roughly. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Second question is that, you know, if I read the note number one, there is uh, 1,345 crores of uh, ongoing projects uh, expenditure that's uh, balanced capex. Could you, could you break it down as to which projects are these? So these are uh, projects which are in Karadi. So we have one under construction project in Karadi. Uh, we have another project that Vinod uh, already mentioned in Airoli West. So these are the two projects which are uh, currently under construction. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have, you know, just to take this forward, we have upgrade expenditure, which will happen. We are already upgrading two of our parks. We've done major work. There's still uh, some work to happen, so all of that. So today, essentially, in terms of under construction, is broadly the Airoli West project and uh, the Karadi project. And then, of course, uh, there is, yeah, go ahead, please. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but this doesn't include the Madhapur 1.1 uh, redevelopment. It, it does, it does, it does. So the entire oh. 17,900, the breakup of that is in Note 1, also includes the, uh, the Madhapur redevelopment. Okay, all right, perfect. Thank you so much and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and name. The next question is from the line of Manish Agarwal from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. So my first question is on the breakup of lease expiry profile slide. So we have 1.3 million square feet, which is getting expired in nine months, uh, FI22. So out of this, how much is uh, expected to be released? So I just mentioned previously on the call, out of the, from an annual visibility of 1.6 million that was coming for uh, scheduled terminations and expiry, we have visibility for at least 1.1 to 1.2 million out of that. Okay, okay. So broadly 75% on 1.3 also is what we can think for. Out of 1.6? Uh, the slide mentions 1.3 million. This is nine months, FI22. 
Yeah, so I was telling you for the 12 month period cumulative. Okay, 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 sure. And secondly, on the CAPEX plan for this year and the next year, how much will we spend individually? So uh, this year for the balance nine months, uh, we would be spending approximately 500 crore uh, on the existing uh, project and uh, some on the uh, newer. And uh, we will have approximately, I would say next year, uh, depending on you know when these projects get completed and when uh, you know the approvals for a redevelopment etc comes in, uh, we would see a slightly higher number uh, next year. Okay, and Madhapur. And Madhapur redevelopment would take 27 to 30 months, starting from uh, June. No, so the uh, starting will be in the second half of this uh, financial year, depending on when we get the approvals. And uh, we expect completion sometime in FI25, because depending on when the approvals actually come in. Okay. And we have started work on the data center first. But no, do you want to take that? We are waiting to start. We've started the early uh, groundworks, etc. And how much would be the total spend on that data center? So that will be somewhere uh, in terms of the construction cost should be somewhere around uh, 300 to 350 crore. And that is included in this CAPEX figures in the slide, the 1700 crore figure? No, uh, that for balance, yes, it does include. You're talking okay. about the 7900 of Yeah, yeah, it correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah sure. That, thanks, thanks. That's all from my side. Yeah. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, my I have two questions. Uh, this one is for Preeti. So first, uh, I wanted to ask what determines the split between, uh, you know, the dividend, uh, the principal uh, repayment and the, uh, you know, uh, interest from a REIT uh, structure perspective. And the second question uh, is from slide number 19 uh, in, in the NDCF buildup. So, uh, you know, there are two line items. One is for working capital changes and other adjustments. And one is CAPEX, including capitalization interest. I mean, if you could please explain, uh, you know, the difference between these two line items. Thank you. So, so, so let me take the first one. Uh, so you talked about three components, which is return of capital, dividend, and interest. In our case, we don't have a uh, return of capital as of now. Uh, all the distribution that we are making currently, 90% uh, of that is uh, dividend and 10% of that is interest. Now, if I have to just uh, generally talk about this point, then of course, the nature of distribution would depend on the capital structure of the SPVs as well as the REIT. So it depends upon how much is the equity, how much is the debt, what is the profitability of every SPV? So there are numerous factors which come to play in determining what will be the nature of distribution. So therefore, it can uh, change over a period depending on what is the capital structure. But in our case, uh, some of these uh, SPVs uh, in the portfolio are matured SPVs which are in existence for a very long period of time and almost a lot of debt is already repaid. So the profits of those SPVs are higher and therefore we've been able to pull out more dividend. And that's the reason in our case, you would see that 90% distribution is by way of dividend and about 10% is uh, by way of interest. So that was on your first question. The second question was what is CAPEX in, uh, and what is working capital? So CAPEX is nothing but the construction cost which we are incurring on our project. Working capital has a couple of components. Uh, so one is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the fit outs in some of the cases, the tenants require us to do the fit outs for them. Uh, for our practical purpose, we treat that also as CAPEX for us. But from an accounting perspective, that gets classified as working capital. And that's the reason you see that finding place under the head working capital. Plus, as I had mentioned earlier in the call, given that this is the first quarter of the financial year, there are certain expenses which we have prepaid for the entire year, and that's the reason you see the working capital on the higher side. So working capital essentially has put out at certain prepaid expenses, your normal creditor outgoes, 
so those are generally uh, the kind of expenses which are sitting in working capital and capex is purely construction cost for the projects i hope that answers thank you just one last clarification uh, is there any way to model i mean do you expect this 92 to 8% to be fairly stable going forward or is there any way to model uh, this or uh, i mean do you expect a change so as i said uh, this is what we have guided to for our projection period uh, and then as i said as we go along it depends on the capital uh, structure of the stvs and the reits so at least uh, during the projection period this is what uh, we believe will be the composition thank you yeah thank you a reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time next question is from the line of satinder singh bedi from eon infotech limited please go ahead yeah uh, thanks again uh, so this question is for pp and again it goes back to the ndcs build up on slide uh, 19 uh, so so pp you have this uh, net debt drawdown of uh, 256 crores for the quarter and if we add the capex and the working capital uh, uh, this becomes about 192 crores so that still leaves about 64 crores of debt uh, drawdown which has not uh, been applied either for capex or working capital so, so where has this 64 uh, uh, crores been applied okay yeah so uh, you know if you just look at the ndcf construct uh just below the net debt line you also have three other expenditure lines which are the interest cost uh then we have in the hyderabad entities we have the telangana government undertaking also which is one of the shareholders of that spv holding 11% so the dividend which goes to them uh, is subject to dividend distribution tax in their hands not for the reit and then of course you have certain expenses at the reit level so the balance 60 uh, is accounted that way so if you add the other three items it gets to that number uh, uh, but pretty that 11% of telangana state is anyway not our income uh, 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 so that's not reach income anyway because we have owners to the extent of 89% in those three FTVs. Correct. Correct. So my point is, my point is, okay. Uh, can you please confirm that uh, uh, all of the debt drawdown has gone towards capex and none of the debt has been used uh, for the distribution payment and the distribution payment is is a flow through from the actual earnings. Uh. so let me put it this way so what happens is i just explained earlier uh some of the working capital changes and cash flows have uh, are based on timing as well so one example which i had given was uh, we were expecting uh, 35 crore of tax refunds in this quarter but we received it in the previous quarter itself so to that extent what happens is when we receive the cash flows earlier we pay down the debt and in this quarter when we actually have to make distribution we draw that debt back because there's no point keeping that money in a bank account so we pay down the debt temporarily and then draw the debt again so therefore these timing cash flow issues are bound to happen similarly as i said you know today we have certain prepaid expenses which we are paying in advance for the rest of the year and then you may not have those expenses coming in the next uh, quarter so it will not be right to say that uh, you're not the debt which you're seeing here is also a function of certain cash flows having come in earlier because of which the drawdown uh, the debt prepayment has happened earlier and new uh, debt is drawn again this quarter and also of course as i said earlier also some of this was already factored uh, even at the time of uh, ipo so that's broadly how the ndcs has been working yeah okay so Okay. That explains it. Okay, and uh, one small query regarding uh, 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 the slide of uh, uh, page 118 of your uh, of your quarterly deck. Uh, this is not the uh, presentation. This is the total 148 document. It talks of a 22% uh, 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 with landowner in a JDA. Okay, uh, so what is that? 22% of what project is that? Okay, so that's the Chennai project, uh, which is the Commerce Zone uh, Porur, which is in okay. Chennai. So, uh, in that project, the land owner, the sharing in the land owner in the space, it's not in the JV. 
So the okay, yeah. there is nothing. A hundred percent of the ownership of the SPV is with the REIT. Uh, there is no other shareholder in the SPV. But in the overall project, in terms of the area, twenty-two percent of that area is going to the landowner in view of the land which is contributed for the project. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you. I think that's very clear. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. As there are no further questions. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mindspace Business Parks Lead, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.